How is it going, everybody? Uh, so today I am looking at PBR stock specifically. It is another oil company. Well, I think it's oil, and then um, they also transport, you know, things for shipping, I believe. So, Petrolio Brasilio, better known by the something something, is a state-owned Brazilian multinational corporation in the petroleum industry headquartered in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Okay, so yeah, this is all for petroleum and whatnot. Um, this is something I'm definitely looking at getting into just because of things such as the market cap being $67.24 billion, the price of earnings is $2.02, and the dividend yield being 70%, which probably is, you know, not sustainable, but not really worried about it. It might be, you know, getting up there because of how high the uh, market cap is. This is the six month right here. It is pretty low for the six month. Um, I hope it goes down a bit more, say to around ten dollars uh, or whatnot. But this is a company that I'm definitely going to look at getting into. Hopefully, I can get out of my some of my A bad position, BBD, you know, and those positions that I was swing trading, and I'm going to jump into this one here. Just because of how low it is. I like jumping into low companies like that with those great PEs. I looked number of employees, 45,500, 2021. The revenues, 83.97 billion. Uh, founded October 3rd, 1953. You know, so it's a safe company and it has potential to pay high dividends. If you come over here to where I'm at here, the green here is for last year. So you have that. And it paid, okay, so, and, and this isn't like necessarily quarterly or anything. But let's see what the pay dates are, so payment. Okay, so that one I didn't show it as a payment yet, but five, six, okay, so the, the pay dates are kind of a little wherever. And then you look at the year before, 2021, it only paid three times. And then it just like changes as you go. These were a bit higher. But yeah, they paid higher ones here and so forth. It's definitely something that I'm willing to put money into um, because I believe that I'd rather have a shot at getting really good dividends. I mean, you can have consecutive income, but since I'm still not living on this and I work a job, I can you know take the risk of just getting some of these high dollar, like $1.17 dividend. Yeah, you might not, but maybe you will. You know, so for me, it's, it's worth the chance of doing that, you know, versus having like a consistent dividend like Coca-Cola pays, which Coca-Cola is great, but you know, there, you don't have to worry about things in, in the world and all that for the most part, you know, but, uh, I did get a screenshot of the history of the dividends. You had 2014, which is a while back. So they just started within the last two years doing that dividend again. And, uh, you know. There you go, you know, not super high in the past. So risk, definitely some risk, but it's something that I am willing to jump on and try just because there's a lot of just ups and downs and things all over the place in the markets right now, at least in my mind. Quarterly financials. Okay, so September 2022. 1.506 billion, so up 42%. Got some green there. Doesn't have the part I was looking at. I guess that's that one earnings. Okay. You know, but then you uh, pull up here. So there's ships. So these are ships that they have and whatnot. You know, so it's like, all right, you know, it's definitely a producing company and whatnot. So I'm super happy to get that. I got the Wikipedia page, which obviously Wikipedia just gives you a general idea of what's going on. It's not like, you know, a source or whatever. You know, that's kind of, just, I'm just using it just to see what's up. You know, but it tells you what it's better known as, which I don't really care, where it's headquartered. The company was ranked number 181 in the most recent Fortune Global 500 list. 
In the 2020 Forbes Global 2000, Petrobras was ranked as the 65th largest public company in the world. Not bad. So the history is created in 1953 under the government of Brazil. Slogan, the oil is ours. Okay, <laughs> that's a good slogan. Uh, it was given a monopoly in Brazil. In 1953, Brazil produced only 2,700 barrels of oil per day. In 1961, the company REDUC refinery began operations near Rio. So forth. Uh, let's see. Salish. Okay, so here it says in 2006, Petrobras said that their industrial retort could process 260 tons an hour of oil shell. Okay. In 1994, Petrobras put the Petrobras 36, the world's largest oil platform, into service. In 1994, okay, it sank after an explosion in 2001 and was a complete loss wow in 1997 the government approved law which broke petrobras monopoly so these are things that are like going against it and allowed competition in brazil's oil fields all right in 2000 petrobras set a world record for oil exploration in deep waters reaching a depth of 1,877 meters, 6,158 feet below sea level. In 2002, Petrobras acquired the Argentine company Perez Company K and all this stuff, and his family foundation for $1.18 billion. All right, so it seems like the government knocked him down a bit in Brazil and they took away the monopoly. They had an incident on what was the biggest in the world at one point. And it seems like they are coming back with all those trial and error. They're coming back and they're coming back. It looks to be pretty strong, especially with that, you know, that, that very high, almost $70 billion market cap. Operations, businesses, areas. The company operates in six business areas listed in the order of revenue. Refining, transportation, and marketing. Exploration and production. Okay, so you love exploration. So crude oil, natural gas, liquids, and natural gas exploration. Distribution. Okay, so there you have a distributor. You know, they're out there selling it. Gas and power. Transportation and trading of natural gas. And LNG in generation and trading of electric power. International exploration and production of oil and gas. Refining. Transportation and marketing. Distribution and gas and power operations outside of Brazil. Okay. There you go. So Brazil put a monopoly on them. So they're like, all right. Well, we're just going to go international. Biofuels. Okay. So people use that as future in a lot of things. Um, I don't. <laughs> Looking at a whole future thing. Uh, I'm more into now. Production of biodiesel and its co-products and ethanol-related activities such as equity investments, production, and trading of ethanol. Sugar and the excess electricity generated from sugarcane. Okay, so production and reserves. It's always good to have reserves, you know, that's for sure. Uh, Petrobus controls significant oil and energy assets in 16 countries in Africa, North America, South America, Europe, and Asia. However, Brazil represented 92% of Petrobras worldwide production in 2014 and accounted for 97% of Petrobras worldwide reserves on 31 December 2014. Okay, so that was well eight years ago, not when 2023 would go into nine. When the company had 8,112.8 million barrels of oil equivalent. Okay, so the company produced, in 2015, the company produced 2.284 million barrels of oil equivalent, which is 13,970,000 gallons G -A or G -J per day. All right, so, yeah, I mean, reserves had outside of Brazil accounted for 8.4%. Okay, so we know what 2014 has. They've already told us that. 
north region, northeast region, southeast region. All right, so they got a bunch of stuff. The company's growth was halted by the 1973 oil crisis. So now, instead of 2014, we're going way, not way back, but we're going back. All right, so this is production and whatnot, which is good to read over that stuff. And, and I have been reading over some that I will read over more. But let's look at some stuff now. In January 2017, the company concluded the sale of 100% of Petrobras Chile Distribution. Okay, so we got some of that. In March 2019, the company concluded a sale. Okay, I'm looking for some production stuff. So, so they're buying out. Um, let's see. Yeah, so the company concluded the sale of 100%. So they were selling some stuff, it looks like. Maybe. In January 2020, stated that it ended all of its business in Africa after completing the sale of 50% stake. All right. So, the, with the troubles that they've had, and the selling that they're at, and they're at 67.24 billion and that's been, so they're mostly focusing on 2014, which is here. So the price has stayed the same, even with a lot of these, a lot of these sales, it looks like. So 2004 going up into 2007. All right. And this is 2008. What are we looking at here? One, 2007. So yeah, the 2008. Uh, that's like where everything was like the boom, the 2008 market crash, market crash and all that stuff, which everything tanked because that's what that was. That was a, the housing bubble and all that, that they have all their movies about, the big short, so forth. And everything was skyrocketing because everybody was just making money like insane. So this, this was the, uh, the bubble, you know, same as referencing meta stock again. You know, so that was the bubble. So none of that was actual value anyway. So that's how you kind of decide, at least how I decide, if I want to get into certain companies. Not only just because of dividends, because you see the dividend history there, uh, down there. So it's not uh, consistent. But yeah, so I don't really care about this here. Same as I pointed that out uh, when my meta videos two months ago. It's about this stuff. So I don't really see the company even being valued, even at that point, over the $40 per share. That was simply just um, FOMO. No bubble. All that. That's it. So really, you could say good value at this. Yeah, I would say it's kind of where it's setting at. Well, I still think it's kind of a bit low. I think this company could be were like per the share i would say the share in my opinion is probably more around you know like i think this has the potential to go to like 15 you know 15 16 dollars a share i don't know how long it would take but you know i don't think that they're going anywhere and i think they could go up and you can also have a chance of getting some nice dividends even with the history of it, I think you. I think this has like a good like 50 percent upside to it, but it might take a little while. And if you have an oil boom or whatever, you know, then you definitely can get back up into that fifteen range. So yeah, this is this is not bad in my opinion. This is pretty good, especially if the dividends keep coming in the way they're coming. Um, the lowest one that they've had. Okay, so January, April 15, 2021. Payday was March. January, February. No, I got that wrong. January, February, March, April, May. So payday was May. And they had 29 cents a share. And then after that, 
you're looking at like about 60 cents on average. Uh, it's not bad. In my opinion, that's not bad. Because you think 60 cents, so at 10, we'll just say $10. 10% is a dollar. You know, so you still. And then it can have the upside of hit, getting something that's just, you know, a huge one. I don't know. This is just something I was just kind of looking at and seeing what's up, but I'll still probably pick up some shares in it because I think there is, I think there is upside to it, in my opinion. Especially if it goes down a little bit more, like into this range. I mean, it did. I doubt it will because the 2020 COVID thing that's over, and I don't think the oil is going to reflect that. So I think that's gone. So I think the next best thing is somewhere around the ten dollar range. So I think it's still pretty good. The Brazilian government directly owns 54% of common shares with voting rights. Okay. Oil spills. Okay, so the last one was 2001. So let's we'll say 21 years ago, because we're not going to count this year. It just started. Um, that's not 21 years ago was the last time they had a spill? That's not bad. They had a lot of spills in uh, 2000. Looks like they learned from their mistake. There are multiple mistakes. We only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spills. And that's just what was reported. You know, who knows what other other stuff. But, yeah, so I was just doing a little rundown over this company. A little bit of its history, so forth. Um, skyscraper hosting. Yeah, patrols. There's their, there's their skyscraper building. It's pretty cool. So yeah, you know, if you're uh, if you're kind of a gambling person with the market, uh, judging by like I said, these uh, the dividend history here, I mean, you might be able to hit you know a couple lucky dividend payouts on this. So at fifty one, so fifty two percent that is currently at now. Uh, hey Siri, bring up my calculator. See if it does it. Hey Siri. Hmm. Bring up my calculator. All right, so say for somebody who threw $5,000 into this, and we won't say 52% just because, you know, whatever. So we'll say 35%, right? Say, say you just get random good dividend. That's $1,750 per year divided by 12 months. So you're getting 145 round it to 146 but you're actually paying taxes too, so we just say 140 140 uh per month you know and that's at that that 35 percent. if it does pay an even higher dividend yield occasionally you're getting a little bit more you know you probably have to pay foreign tax probably a little bit but it's not really that big a deal so definitely a company that i will watch and keep my eye on i probably will pick this up just because it has that price earnings of a two I really enjoy price earnings like that. I really enjoy market caps so having a billion, 67 billion. That is great. You know, when you look at the max, I mean, you're not overpaying. You know, the, your price of earnings tells you that right off the bat. You know, and then there's always those chances where things just rush into it and you can get a nice upside. Several times here, 15, 16, 16, 16. You know, you look at that. We'll go to the, we'll go to the five... You know, the five year here, the past five years, 13, 14, 16, 16, they got 15. So there's there's like almost 50% upside here, plus all the all of this dividends here. And that, that was that 140, that was at 35%. I mean, you could even knock it down to like, like, like a 30 or 28% dividend. You're still probably hitting around 100 bucks a month. So, and you have the chance of getting a 50% upside. So you drop 5K into it, you could potentially get that up. Just in like you know, like four or five months, you can turn that into another twenty five hundred dollar profit. So this is definitely a good one. There's a lot of good stocks out there to buy from and so forth. 
so forth. But ones that give you a huge upside that are a sure bet, you know, very few because a lot of the blue chip stocks that are good stocks, um, they just consistently go up, you know, so... So it's not like you have 50% upside. And by that, I mean, for example, let's go with Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola here, it goes up, it goes up. There's no 50% upside. There's just very safe. If you're somebody who's retired and you don't work, and you live off your you know, your retirement, your Social Security, your investments, your 401ks, whatever things you did to prepare for your retirement in that time of your life, this is a stock for you. But when it comes to somebody who's trying to build wealth quick and do all that, Something like PBR is a good one for me to look at because I got a lot of years ahead of me. Uh, you know, at least that's the idea. You know, and the only time this actually jumped down was during the COVID thing where it went down. Okay, case since they won't show me there, we say around 38. And that was, that was great. That would have been a great time for people to buy into that for sure. But otherwise, this is something that, you know, if I had $10 million, right? You know, and I was like, all right, you know, I want to be safe with four million of that, three million, whatever. Yeah, you 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 buy Coke or something because it's always going to go up because it's it's you know it's got that moat that Warren Buffett talks about. You know, as inflation comes up, just up the price of Coke products a little bit. People are going to pay it. You can even up the dividend a little bit. People, you know, will be happy with that. This is a sure bet forever. You know, but if you're trying to build wealth and not just protect wealth, this is protecting wealth. Coke is a protect your protect your wealth stock. PBR and other companies that I've shown in previous videos that I'm trying to get in on, those are to build your wealth. I'm not really protecting, but I'm not making foolish decisions in my opinion either. But um, yeah, I'm not going Coca-Cola protection or, or another good one. Procter and Gamble, obviously, if you look up tons of products um, in your house and you type in who owns this brand, more than likely it's going to be Procter and Gamble. You know, and it's the same thing. You look at it, this is protect your wealth stock. It's not a build your wealth stock like other ones, in my opinion. I mean, it builds it, but, you know, not fast, not rapid, not quick. Uh, so, just want to do a little rundown, you know, like I said, of, um, this in particular company, PBR, this is something I'm going to look at buying into. I'm definitely going to pick up some shares. Hopefully, it can go at like $10 or less. That's when I'd like to get in. But I still believe this stock can hit $15, $16. I do believe there's like a 40%, 50% turnaround. Might be a few months. It probably will be. But for me, something I'm willing to do. So um, this is a little quick analysis. Y'all have a good day. And I will see you when the market opens tomorrow. And hopefully we all make some more money with that Jerome Powell speech and the jobs report or earnings and all that ain't that big a deal. Because uh, people are going to spend money even if they don't have it. They're going to open credit cards. They're going to get free government money or something. That, I'm not really too worried about that. But hopefully we all do well tomorrow and all next week. Till next time, have a good one.